Hello, Professor Toybox here along with Syndrome, and I'm back for part two of a viewer request that came from Jeremy Hensley on YouTube, who wanted to know how to make a paintball game in which a player who's killed will respawn at a random location. Last time I set up the paintball game itself, I started with the paintball game template and showed you how to modify it to create a paintball game with two teams. Today I'm going to show you how to modify it further to set up the random respawn. Right now, if you die, you'll respawn at the same location where you died. This makes it too easy for the other player to camp out at that spot and snipe you when you respawn. It'd be nice if you could respawn at a random location so it isn't so predictable. Fortunately, there's a way to do this, and it isn't too difficult to set up. So the key to implementing the random respawn is a Creativitoy called a checkpoint. And we'll find that in the Creativitoy's drawer. And I'm going to drop down 10 of these around here. And I want that to face the direction the player will respawn at. Typically when they respawn, they'll be facing the direction I'm facing right now with the red dot on the end of that to your front left. And so we could put one down over here. And we can put another one down on this end. And I'm going to put these around the perimeter of the park. One over here, one over here, one facing that way, and I don't think I want to put one here behind the podiums. Um, so let's see, that's what, one, two, three, four, five so far. And we could put one out here on the street. A little ways. I've already got one over here I can use. That would be seven. Put one over by the bus stop. That would be eight. I've got one over here I can use that should make nine. Though I might want it a little closer to the park. So we'll put this one down. We'll make that one uh, nine. And we'll put one down right over here. So that's 10. So now we have 10 different potential places where the player could respawn. And typically how these work is you put it down and the player would run over those. And when they do, and here we'll just go ahead and demonstrate it. You may have seen these before in other toy boxes, but when you run through it, now you'll see there's a little one over top of that. And when the player respawns, that's where they'll come back to. So you could do this as an option, and uh, of course if the other player happened to see which one you ran over, um, they can try to head you off and come down here and meet you when you respawn. So that may or may not help, but that's the easiest way to do that. Um, of course, they only work if you happen to run through one of those. If you don't, you're still going to respawn where you died before. But there's another way to use these through logic connections. And so uh, we're going to drop down a couple more toys here. Uh, well, actually just one because one of them's out of the paintball game we're going to reuse. So we have the randomizer. And I'm going to go ahead and put this right up here. And so with the randomizer, I'll come in here to the properties for this. And you've seen this toy um, a lot in uh, my random dungeon series, but um, the properties under here, you can kind of control the frequency with which you want that particular random trigger to be triggered. I usually leave all of these at zero, so they're evenly, um, they have an even chance of being selected. And we'll come and create a new logic connection. So on random trigger one, we would come over here to this checkpoint and open the logic menu for that. And we're going to do a set checkpoint on that. And we'll do it for all. There's no need to make it complicated by doing a set for player one and a set for player two. And then we would do the same thing for the other logic signals. Come back to the randomizer, new logic connection on random trigger two. Come over to each of these other ones and do a set checkpoint for all. 
And we do that for every one of the 10 that we laid down. So random trigger, there's 10 random trigger signals, there's 10 checkpoints. We need to hook them all up that way. Now we need something to invoke the randomizer. And one of the things we have available to us is down here in the paintball toys uh, that we already put down for the game. We can hook up to the victory tracker which is this guy, I believe. Yep. So on here, we would do a new logic connection. And when defeated, player any. So when any player is defeated, doesn't matter if it was by one of the AIs, doesn't matter if it was another player, come up here to the randomizer and say action. And so what will happen is the victory tracker keeps track of um, who gets defeated and uh, when a player gets defeated it'll invoke the randomizer and the randomizer will broadcast a random trigger signal 1 through 10 which will in turn set one of these checkpoints to be the checkpoint that's active for all players. And so when the player responds, it'll be at one of those 10 locations and it'll be randomly selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up all of the rest of these and I'll be back in a moment and we'll see how it works. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, I've got the randomizer hooked up to all 10 of my checkpoints. And I moved a couple of them around. I pulled one off of that wall over there and brought it a little closer to the park. And I did the same with the one here for the bus stop, just to keep things more focused on the arena. I did still hook up to this one back over here. And I uh, brought another one down and set it behind player two starting position. One more thing I wanna show you with the checkpoints before we test this out is I'm gonna leave them this way, but there is a property under here that you can set that's for hidden. So if you don't wanna see the checkpoints in your game and all of the possible places where the player may respawn, you can turn those off and they're still visible um, when you're in the editing mode. Um, well, usually there's like a ghost image I thought, but anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, you can turn those off and hide them and uh, that way it won't be quite as obvious to players where they can possibly respawn. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a try. I set up a spinner down there and I ran Syndrome into this thing a bunch of times to get his health really low just to make this easy to test. And so let's go ahead and try this out with a random respawn and see how it works. And in case you're curious, that does override. So if I happen to walk through here, I've got that set now for my player one respawn location. The random signals through the logic connection will override that. And you'll see that here in a moment. Okay, and there we go. So it randomly respawned me over here. So that worked out pretty good. And yeah, as a player, it might take you a moment to get your bearings and figure out <laughs> where did it put me in relation to where I was. But uh, yeah, I think that worked out pretty good. So now the paintball game is a bit fairer to the player who gets killed. They have a better chance to survive when they respawn, and that's a good thing. I think the random respawn is useful for a lot of different games. Next time, I'm going to build a more traditional style deathmatch for two players that will take advantage of this technique. I'm going to build that from scratch so you can see how to make it yourself. And at the same time, you'll get to see the full toy box that I've built here for my battle arena. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to sign up on my blog or subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so, so you can see what I do next. You can also find build tips and logic diagrams on my blog for the different toy boxes that I've built, so you can recreate them on your own PC or console. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.